In this video, we'll look at words that describe collections of objects. First, we'll start with a word all of us are familiar with, a dozen. We use the word dozen to describe a group of 12 of something. For example, we can have a dozen eggs, which means that we would have 12 eggs. We can also have a dozen basketballs and a dozen cars. In all of these cases, we have 12 of those things. Say we have 671 balls. How many dozens of balls are there? We can treat dozen as a unit. One dozen is equal to 12 things, in this case, 12 balls. Note, since this collection is exactly defined, it will never limit our significant figures. If we start with 671 balls and multiply this quantity by one dozen over 12 balls, we get that we have 55.9 dozen balls. We said that a dozen means 12 of something. Similarly, a mole means that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that something. We can have a mole of eggs, which would mean that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. The same can be said for basketballs and cars. If we had a sandcastle built out of 42.3 moles of grains of sand, how many grains of sand are in the sandcastle? This time, we'll start out with the 42.3 moles of grains of sand. We've just learned that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. In this case, this something is grains of sand, so we'll use that conversion next. In the end, we'll get that 42.3 moles of grains of sand is equal to 2.55 times 10 to the 25th grains of sand. It's important to note that this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd per mole conversion will also never limit our significant figures, but it is always important to use enough precision in the value to not cause rounding errors. So always use the value to at least one more figure than you need. This value, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, is known as Avogadro's number. We usually use this in a chemical context when talking about numbers of atoms. That's because atoms are really, really small. The tip of your finger, which is about one milliliter in volume, has roughly 10 to the 23rd atoms in it. If we didn't have a collection like the mole, then the numbers we would use would be really huge if we're talking about number of atoms and molecules, or really tiny if we're talking about how much they weigh. That's the power of Avogadro's number. Let's look at 3.3 moles of boron. How many boron atoms are there in these 3.3 moles of boron? As we've said before, one mole of something means that we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that something. This is also true for boron atoms and means that for every mole of boron, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd boron atoms, so we'll use this as a conversion factor. We'll get that there are 2.0 times 10 to the 24th boron atoms in 3.3 moles of boron. Notice that it's really important to be specific about moles of what and atoms of what. As problems get more involved, we will need to be specific in our conversions. We can actually use the periodic table to determine how much one mole of boron weighs in grams. We look at the atomic number. According to our periodic table, boron's atomic weight is 10.81. This means that one mole of boron atoms, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd boron atoms, weighs 10.81 grams. The same is true for all atoms. We can use atomic masses to determine how much a mole of that atom weighs in grams. So how much would our 3.3 moles of boron weigh in grams? This time, we start out with the 3.3 moles of boron. We said that one mole of boron weighs 10.81 grams, so we'll use this as our next conversion factor. We'll get that 3.3 moles of boron weighs 36 grams. Let's look at one last question before we go. How many hydrogen atoms are there in 12.2 grams of BH3, which is also known as boring? We'll start with the 12.2 grams of boring. Our first step is to convert it to moles by using boring's molar mass. One mole of boring weighs 13.83 grams. We'll next take a look at what it takes to make boring. By looking at its formula, we see that we need one mole of boron and three moles of hydrogen to make one mole of boring. We'll use this conversion factor, three moles of hydrogen per one mole of boron, as the next step. 
we would now be able to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen in 12.2 grams of borane. However, we wanted the number of hydrogen atoms found in this amount of borane, so our final step must be to multiply by Avogadro's number. Finally, we get that there are 1.59 times 10 to the 24th hydrogen atoms in 12.2 grams of borane.